Good evening, everybody. And for those of you that live in Denmark, Tony, good morning. All right, so here be, here comes the difficult part. Constantly getting questions. What do we buy in this market? Well, here's where you should be doing reverse engineering, which is if you can consistently use the information built into the candlestick charts, you don't have to worry about what you would be buying now. You're just happy that you were able to get into positions earlier when it was time to buy so that you're taking advantage of these big price moves. So as we can see, the Dow, ever since it came off the piercing signal here off the 50, went to the first target. And then the good news about the jobs report blasted it through that level. Where could this market go to? Have no idea. So there's only one thing you can do at this point. Just basically stay long until you see sell signals. Same scenario on the NASDAQ, which has even been more comforting ever since it did this little J hook then gapped up you haven't had to worry at all uh, with this uptrend in progress crude oil backed off a little bit today but it's staying above the T line and it's hovering right near the $40 range which is where people can make money I don't say people Drillers can make money at the $40 area. So here's the important facet of being able to see what is going on in investor sentiment. So MT, I think there's a lot of uh, oil-related companies that have been using, or like all oil companies, they use their reserves as their collateral for loans uh, to maintain the business. Then all of a sudden, when your collateral goes from $50 a barrel down to $20 a barrel, you've got a lot of uh, lenders that say you need to do something to shore up your collateral, which they can't. So they go into Chapter 11, which means they're protected from their creditors. Now that crude oil is back up to approximately $40 a barrel, there's a lot of uh, pressure being taken off as far as the lenders are concerned. and. Uh, yeah, so the bankruptcy, uh, uh, it did, let's see. So it came from this level down to this level. All right, well, we'll get, we'll get to that later. Let's see, we were on crude oil. There's nothing else that I can see that is really intriguing. Uh, uh, things like cattle are just kind of drifting. Uh, things like wheat, just choppy. So. There isn't a whole lot going on in the uh, uh, futures area that make things intriguing. And right now, gold is just kind of a, uh, let's go to GCA, what did I just do? And let's see what M looks like. Whoops, it's gone. So let's try this. No, nope. goofing up, just goofing up. Here we go. All right, so there's gold. It's kind of drifting, but not going in any major direction. Oh, I didn't even check silver. What are we looking at? The Qs. All right. Ah, yeah, silver popped up. Why can't I get the right contracts? Yeah, silver looks like it's holding right here at the T-line area. 
So, all right, I'm going to shift right to the stocks because my list of existing positions or positions we've recommended is bigger than the ones, obviously, that uh, we can find that are good trades out there. And that's because, obviously, we got into a lot of positions that early and that are working well. So the recent ones that we recommended was Twitter because it did the bobble breakout. And then if it opened positive today, this trend was going to continue right on up. We also recommended NBLEX, but it didn't execute today. It started selling off pretty immediately, but it's still a buy if they come back up uh, through today's open. I'm going to go through these relatively quick because you're going to be able to see obviously what's happening. G or G Park, or Geo Park can still be bought on positive trading. Look at your fry pan bottom. Look at your trend kicker signal. Now your doji, if it opens positive, your doji sandwich, where's your eventual target? Up here at the 200-day moving average. Now, will all of them move up significantly? Uh, NGL kind of backed off a little bit today but still in this fry pan bottom uh, uh, movement. So uh, I was asking the rhetorical question, will all of them move up well? And it only takes one. Remember, we were buying this when it came out of this little wedge formation and did a best friend gap up. Today, it just ran like a scalded dog after another best friend breakout. Closed at 73.27. Now, we were putting spreads on because it didn't look like it was ready to move real big. So the spreads have worked well, but obviously limited. Right now, this stock is trading at 89.54 after hours. Uh, okay, that might be 88.60. So this is the kind of the uh, uh, analysis to say, does every trade that you put on going to have a big price move? No, but you're always putting yourself in situations where the probabilities of something big happening is greatly in your favor. All you need to have is one move like this, that if you were buying calls in this area, unfortunately, I was buying call spreads, which meant I tripled my money but I can't imagine where some of the calls would have gone at this point. And Blex is up after hours. Oh, yeah, it's not up real big. And then also NBR. This is just as clear a picture as you can get. Your fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern. I think I took profits on the initial move, stopped out here. Bought some more calls here or here. I can't remember. Anyways, they were up big. So, again... Could we calculate that this market was going to send some of these prices off like this? Definitely not. But at least we were positioned in situations where they were looking good and we were in the right place at the right time. And that's exactly how you have to be trading is every time you put on a trade, you want to know that the probabilities are in your favor. 10 is just a gangbuster. Bought some in here and then bought some uh, uh, and some other accounts as it did the little J-hook pattern. So it basically has doubled in the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trading days. So I'm, I'm not pointing this out to, to do any bragging or chest pounding. I'm just illustrating 
that if you were in the right positions at the right time, you're sitting in positions where you don't have to worry about any, doing anything other than the hold. Does all this retail investors chasing or institutions? Uh, I bet you died to donuts, Jay, that you had a bunch of the expert institutions that were waiting for the terrible second pullback because this economy, remember a month and a half ago, you had all the experts, quote, uh, saying that they weren't, they were keeping their money on the sidelines because this, this economy is going to be in bad shape. It's, we're going to see a double bottom. You got all this money still sitting on the sidelines looking like doofuses after this market is now nudging the uh, all-time highs again. So they can't sit there very much longer if they're not already committing. I think, did I see it correctly, that today the NASDAQ had record volume, record volume, uh, Well, yes, but remember, the market is an indicator of what everybody is anticipating. And it's a good, I want to say, indicator of what's happening in the future. So the market heading up is because people that probably have a lot more insight or a lot more research than you and I sitting here each day is seeing what's actually happening maybe two uh, two or three moves out in the front not just what's right in front of our face uh, Bill that is usually a good thing because it does two things one if this market keeps going it becomes more fodder for the uptrend and two if the market pulls back, it becomes a padding because people are going to cover their, their short positions. Yeah, TGI, is this TGI? Yes, up, uh, up higher after hours. So there's your kind of your fry pan bottom, J hook pattern. It just came up and filled that gap today. But if it continues to trade higher, there's your next likely target. So, Right now, I wouldn't be buying too much of anything, even though I've got some here as we go along. Uh, Viacom, we're buying this as it broke out through this little wedge and then did another J-hook pattern with your McMuffin pattern right in here. Uh, let's see, let's make sure I'm not skipping. And then I just found out to my great disappointment that there are options on AZUL. As I was looking at TC2000, it showed there wasn't any options. Or I would have definitely been buying calls as it broke out from here at the 9, let's say the $10 level. And now we're trading at the $17 level. There's a 70% move already in, in that uh, stock. Which, again, when AO or American did the little cup and handle slow curve breakout, went from the 50 to the 200 in a matter of a couple of days, still showing that that profit taking is over, that the uptrend's in progress. This is allowing for analyzing the charts that are in that sector. Airlines like Copa, that did a doji sandwich breakout of its fry pan bottom, and then today it looks like it almost did a you know, little trend kicker signal. Uh, Azu is up more after hours. All right. So what's happening in a lot of these uh, sectors, like the airline stocks? Well, remember, what's his name? Uh, never forget what's his name. Buffett sold out all the airlines.
Well, it's probably not everything is up, Jay. What I have discovered, and this is not, this is the reason I, I concentrate on figuring out what the candlestick signals are telling, is that when I've been in positions that we've scanned and found are the strong sectors of strong stocks, it, uh, Uh, it has been pretty much my uh, observation slash experience in the last 40 years to, to know that if you're in a strong sector and the market is still showing strength, the strong sectors obviously are going to continue strong. That's why they got started in the first place. Is Azu a little dimple right in here? Eh, you could call it a dimple. What? Oh, what? What was more important? I don't know where this line has come from. We're going to remove that line. The important factor is, even if you didn't see this as a fry pan bottom, if you cut the chart off right there, what'd that tell you? You're in the oversold area. You had a little. Uh, kicker type uh, star day back up above the T-line, what it tell you about your downtrend? It was probably over. And then you had another buy point when it gapped up from your bobble breakout. So these, uh, uh, Tom, hold on to your individual ones, and but I'll do this one right now real quick. But hang on to your individual ones until I tell Jim to do the double line. This one's a J-hook pattern. You can see kind of the trend kicker signal that took you through the 200. I'd still be a buyer of this one on strength with the anticipation wave one and wave three probably be the same. Should we be preparing a list of possible shorts? Uh, Joe, you can. Just as easy as it is to do the scans for, let's say, the biggest percent price moves in stocks today, when you get done doing those scans, you can flip it right around and say which ones had the biggest percent price moves down today. And that allows you to find which ones are getting hit. Now earlier today, and I'll be skipping around here, Netflix was actually trading lower when the market was up strong, but then it finally came back up. So had this closed down here, yes, that would be something you could still consider a short. Yes, uh, there's another answer for, for Jay. It's not the retail people that, uh, I'm going to get way off track here. The retail people, there's an old adage that when the retail people started buying that was time to sell. But the tr reality was, back before you could trade online, you only had one source or one main source of getting your information from when to buy or sell. And that's when your stockbroker called you up and said, hey, we should be buying such and such. This market is heading up strong. And that's when everybody got in because the brokers were finally, they weren't calling people and saying, hey, this market is down and everything looks terrible. We should be buying because they knew they couldn't convince people to do that. Um, yeah, so, and Richard, that was me. I was the worst investor in the world and I was a stockbroker for eight years. Oh, I think the darn raccoons are jumping on my tractor. No, somebody's out there. All right. Um, now I forgot what I was saying. The raccoons are attacking my tractor. So it isn't the old adage that it's time to sell when the retailers are buying. Remember, the electronic or online trading came about 
because the one of the uh, crashes, I think it was 1987, the Dow was, had dropped like 500 points. And the lines to brokerage firms were just filled or the brokers weren't answering. And the problem was it wasn't the institutions that were trying to get in. It was the retail people trying to get in. And when they couldn't get through to their broker and couldn't buy, that's when the regulations started saying that all this information could be put online. Okay. Is Netflix chart considered an opposite of a bobble breakout? Uh, no. No, it was starting a bearish J-hook pattern. As far as a bobble breakdown, it, yeah, you could consider it that, but, uh, or a bearish J-hook pattern. Okay, we got to get going here. We'll be, Again, when the cows come home. DFEN. Dang. DFEN does not come up over here for some reason. But it's still trading positive, and I think it's up a little bit after hours. EBIX, right here at the 200. Makes this very simple. We've got our safety stop at today's open. No, it's D-F-E-N, I think, isn't it? Yes. Whoops. That's the uh, aerospace uh, leverage fund. Let's see. L Brands, a retail stock. Bobble breakout with a best friend signal. You stay long. Uh, we did CPA. So which ones would you be buying now? Well, you've had a pullback in DN or DKNG. That might be one to consider if it starts trading positive, giving you a J-hook pattern. Because at least you're you're setting up in a pattern that, can, that you can recognize versus chasing after something that's already skyrocketed. Same scenario over here on Marvell that might be looking for a J-hook pattern setup. Uh, Bill, yeah, you could do whatever if, if you want to do a straddle. But now I don't do s straddles on something that is just a market move. Um, yeah, I want to look at DFEN is what I'm trying to look at, but it doesn't come up over on this chart service for some reason. Now, NAIL is a EF, uh, ETF, and it does come up over here, so I don't have any reason why it, but DFEN is still one that we're holding on to. So we have held on to, or we've been in BGS for a while. It might be reiterated as a buy with it now breaking out through this level. And that same scenario can be applied to PS. We've been holding that one because it hasn't closed below the T line. But it's probably a good buy if it comes up through this level, putting you into a next wave, uh, into wave three. Stay long on E or NVST. Very good entry right after the uh, cradle pattern. And what's our criteria? You stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T line. With the caveat, if it starts moving too far away from the T line, get a little bit uh, more aggressive as far as setting your stop. So right now, tomorrow our stop would be at t today's low. It shouldn't come back or stays open. It shouldn't come back through that level. XL. Axel. Bobble breakout. Stay long. HZO. Stay long on this one ever since our bobble breakout. 
Let's see, we did nail, we did remember, okay, we did most of them. So the ones that are of interest now in the biggies, or the ones that are getting a lot of following, uh, Beyond Meat had a big day. Tesla traded up with a best friend signal. Now, Amazon started to show some buying, and it's broken out with a little bullish engulfing into new territory. That becomes a lot more uh, intriguing. And Apple also has stayed above the T-line. So they are, would be tough to trade right now, but if you're sitting in these positions, you can stay in them. Uh, yeah, I'll find one here in a second. And you can see that I uh, uh, took profits on Zoom a couple of days ago when it came back down through this level. Now, kind of bought some more calls on this one because it has the potential of a J-hook pattern. And we did Netflix. That's not Netflix. Netflix. Uh, you can get ready to buy this one if it opens positive uh, tomorrow above the T-line. Because you can see the channel. You can see the support right here on the 50. Now if it opens positive, it's coming back up through the T-line. Makes a good place to buy. Uh, which ones did we do that were uh, the bobble breakouts? The bobble breakouts. There are these. Is this one? No, that's just a fry pan bottom. This is a bobble breakout. You came up, you hit the resistance level. We knew there was time to take profits because what did they do up here in the overbought area? If you were in this one, you had a doji, indecision. A doji, hanging man, a le bearish left-right combo. It was time to take profits. But notice what it did when it failed at this level. Pulled back to the T-line. And then came back up. So it basically is a J-hook pattern with a defined resistance level and a defined breakout level. Not many stocks now to buy, or can we add to the oil cruise airline stocks? Uh, there was a couple more here that we were were good. Uh, we bought a few that were bobble breakouts, and I should know where they are. Huh. I'll come across them. Yeah. How about that? I'm just... Uh, STZ is a bobble breakout? Yes. Well, not quite a bobble breakout because it didn't resist up here. I'll find some more. I know they're in here. Oh, Stein or Stone. Stone came right up. It failed right here. You might not have gotten in this move right here. But the fact that it pulled back, and you can see it start curling back up, you could be buying here because there's your bobble breakout. The bobble uh, breakout is just a more refined J-hook pattern. This is basically a J-hook pattern. As soon as it came up through this level, it also had the added visual aspect of the 200. But if you took the 200 out, you essentially have a J-hook pattern. Uh, CP, I don't know the answer to that. But usually you're going to find them just by doing a very simple scan, like which stocks had the biggest percent moves uh, today, or you find ones that, uh, oh, may have come out and 
you saw it selling off right at a resistance level, you hang on to it to see if it's going to do a, uh, a reversal. Okay, let me go through Matador. Did your little breakout, slow curve breakout, closed as a doji right here today. Makes it very simple. If it opens positive, you've got a doji sandwich breakout. D-Dog. See how it had a hard time closing below the T-line? Now you're likely to be back in this uptrend with more upside. Same with uh, CrowdStrike. There's a J-hook pattern setting up. Because notice what they did right here at the T-line. There's your Doji bullish confirmation. This one still has a lot of uh, uh, energy to it. And uh, Nordic, that's a good breakout. And it did it with good volume, so that you might see as a recommended uh, position tomorrow. Where's your next likely target? At least back up into this area, giving you about a 60% uh, upside. Con has earnings tomorrow, all right. So if you're going into earnings, just kind of as a general rule of thumb, if they're still trading strong going into the close, that means people are expecting good earnings. If it does a doji, a shooting star, a bearish harami, you close it out and wait to see what it does. Uh, let's see. We did that. Nah. Okay. Surgery. Your J-hook pattern. Little kicker type signal off the uh, T-line. Possibility of more upside. OMI. Big breakout. You can see where the resistance level was. You can see your doji sandwich. So this makes for very simple. We just went through a uh, training session this weekend. That if you can see a resistance level that everybody else can probably see, and then we can see buy signal setup, there's our doji sandwich setup. We know if it opened positive today, we could get ready to buy immediately, even though it hadn't broken out through this level yet, with the anticipation that this day right here and this day right here are going to be about the same, which meant they did break through. Now, what happens when you're in early on a breakout situation? Everybody and their brother who's been watching to see if it's going to get through the resistance starts coming in. We're just, we just happen to be in it a little bit earlier. Uh, no, Jim, uh, you, yeah, you might do that. But remember, we're not buying the moving averages. The m top priority for candlestick analysis is the signal in the pattern, and or the pattern. Everything else just becomes a confirming uh, indicator. ERJ, you can see what's happening here. This one actually, oops, more like this. So here is the optimal time to buy. If you can see, this is where the fry pan bottom started. You can see how they've broken out through the 50. You could be buying on this day. There's part of your fry pan bottom. Or you could be buying on this day when they gapped up through the resistance level. Oh, uh, let's see. Just way too many. Just tons of things. So there's another wedge breakout, which means wave three. Let me make this smaller. Wave one, wave two. Remember what our expectation is for a uh, oh, fry pan bottom breakout, a big price move. Yeah, I probably would be now 
targeting the 200-day uh, moving average eventually. Hold on to your individual ones. Uh, I've got IVR coming up here soon. What did I just do? SWN, MDLZ. Another one that's right here. The fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern, closed right above the uh, breakout level. If this opens positive, fry pan bottom, uh, oh, uh, you know, com confirmation. Fry pan bottom, there's your doji sandwich. What's that tell you? Well, you can already see what the pattern is setting up. Pretty much your... Uh, your J-hook pattern, bounced up off of this gap up, then a bullish engulfing doji sandwich. What do we know about a doji sandwich? More upside. If there's more upside, what type of pattern is this? Wave one, wave two, wave three of your J-hook pattern. And again, putting you in situations where the probabilities of being in a strong price move are greatly in your favor. This is kind of a five pin bottom bobble breakout. Failed here. Came back, where did it come back to? Right smack dab to the 50. Now what do you got right here? Another little bobble breakout. And what's this setting up? Kind of a little J-hook pattern. That would be implying there's going to be more upside, which also means the fry pan bottom bobble breakout is in progress. Zixi, this is a bobble breakout. Notice how it failed. Came right back to the 50. There's your bullish Harami telling you the selling has stopped. There's your little breakout, bobble breakout, resistance level breakout. How long do you hold on to this one? Until you see a sell signal. So this is kind of easy analysis because this market, uh, I was telling the options room today, I think I've made more money percentage-wise in the fastest time frame that I can remember in decades. These are just, I mean, huge profits. I've got one account that has quadrupled over the last three weeks. So there's another bobble, breakout, T-line crunch, more upside. Oh, I just did that. APHA. And I did have the breakout of uh, Constellation Brands with this little J-hook breakout. BC or Bonanza Creek. Again, there's your J-hook pattern. There's your trend kicker. Strong uh, price move. We've seen a lot of oils Occidental broke out through this resistance level. Likely target 200-day moving average. Something has happened here. That the uh oh, I've done something. What have I done? That doesn't look like Apache. Let me. Do that again. Something's wrong there. Let me try another. Halliburton doing what we expected it to. Remember, when we started recommending this for a longer term hold, when it came up through this level, that it could at least come up here and fill the gap. And if it filled the gap and kept going, your next target was the 200-day uh, moving average. <sighs> I don't know what's happened here. I thought Apache, Apache broke out. Something was wrong with that chart. Yeah, I hit something. I don't know what it was. 
Oh, all right. I've goofed up the patchy. And VFF. This one broke through the uh, 200, came back and has tested it a couple of times and started back up. This one could be a good J-hook pattern uh, setting up nicely. Oh, I skipped a couple up here. Oh, I didn't do IVR, did I? It's on uh, this row. IVR. This is that slow curve fry pan bottom breakout. And then CORR was just a clear cut fry pan, or not a fry pan bottom, scoop pattern. There's the slingshot effect. Same scenario on GTT, flat handle, slingshot effect. Yeah, I don't. I hit something on Apache that goofed it up. I don't know what button I hit because my fingers are just like lightning. They speed across the keyboard and goof things up. There's your J-hook pattern for home up through the 200. So here's a logical deduction. If we know wave three is going to be the same as wave one, when we see this, we can be buying, especially when they've come through a resistance level, knowing there's going to be more upside. A slingshot effect is just kind of that once we see a scoop pattern, when they come out of it, it's just like a slingshot effect to the upside. Strong price move. Uh, CNX. There's your little morning star type scoop type pattern. Wave one, potentially wave three. Yeah, I'll have probably have to close the whole system. Well, let's see. If I bring Yeah, that's what Apache looks like. So I goofed up somehow. That Apache looks like it could go up here to the 200-day uh, moving average. All right, so the problem right now is you've got so many stocks that have had huge price moves. You don't want to be uh, buying. Oh, Boeing was another one. That, that one came out of this fry pan bottom. And look where these uptrend started on Boeing when it gapped up and then you had everything else that we can analyze using candlestick analysis how long do you stay in this one well you kept staying in it until unless it closed below the t-line and what happened in this little J hook there was a bearish left right combo there was your doji sandwich that broke out through here and it just took off uh, like crazy so these are the um, the uh, setups. This is why you always kind of want to watch and learn what the uh, the uh, patterns, the T line, the signals are all telling you in conjunction, so that you are sitting in the right place at the right time. Um, so here's ZS. Look at your best friend break up. Notice where they pulled it back. Once you saw the bearish harami doji where did they pull it back to right smack dab to the t-line now new folks in here that is a relevant statement because nobody has the t-line on their charts so when it pulls back right to that level it's pulling back to a level that 
nobody has on their chart, so it's like a natural support level. That's why the T-line is so effective when you use it in conjunction with candlesticks. Uh, do you think Boeing will go into profit take and have no idea? That same question could have been said here, 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 here. You might be asking that same question up here. All I do is if you're long and you've moved away from the T-line and you're in the overbought area, you just put your safety stop at the previous open. If it comes down through there, that's profit taking taking control. Uh, well, that's still a, just a function of watching uh, watching what the uh, market is telling you. There's whiting. That was trading down here at less than a dollar, closed today at three dollars and fifty cents. I'm trying to think of which other ones. Enron oil and gas. Steady uptrend. Halliburton's, we've stuck that in some of the, the longer term accounts because ever since it gapped up, it's basically been in a pretty steady uptrend. If you didn't buy it down here, you could have been buying it here, you could have been buying it here. All situations, uh, uh, that's, yeah, that's essentially what you're looking for on uh, I've got a few I forget which ones they are oh if I don't know it's TGI TGI oh I'm showing the options room this morning I bought the calls on this one for 35 cents I think I sold them for a dollar fifty or dollar seventy five pulled back I bought the same calls again for 35 cents and now they're at huge like two dollars and some odd so uh, I don't expect anything do you expect Hawaiian Air to pull back at the two I have no idea that's why I watch to see what happens once it gets there I have no expectations. I anticipate that it's going to come back up here to test the 200, but then I'm going to watch to see what it does once it gets there. I'm trying to think which one hit the 200. Oh, American Airlines. As soon as they hit the 200, that's when you would have flipped. Let's see if I can do that. Flip to your 10-minute chart. And you probably wanted to close out right here because it told you they weren't staying up above the T-line. You can always buy back. Uh, Tom, it depends on Tom's question is how far away from the T-line keeps you from getting or entering. If you get in and put a tight stop, it depends on what type of pattern was setting up. Now, more than likely, I wouldn't have been buying up here, obviously. But let's say I would have been buying here when your T-line was probably still down in this area because of the pattern. Remember, the uh, oh Tupperware. Um, yeah, so that opened up here. Let me go, go. So that would have been something that if I saw it open up here, I probably would have had a stop just below the 200. Because if it gapped up through the 200, which was a resistance level, it should be going this way. Everybody's happy. If it came back down, that told me when they gapped up, especially just climbing into the overbought area, if they're selling it off, you want to take profits. Worst case scenario, you sell it off, and then it comes back up. You could buy it back as it came back up through that level. Halliburton, you just watch to see what happens when it gets there. Uh, we'll have no idea on Boeing. 
Which one was it? Uh, nah, three times, March 26. Uh, no, you don't. You, that was a different uh, area. That was that was probably more uh, short covering. This is probably buying coming out of a fry pan bottom. Different scenario. So, again, where's your safety stop? If we don't know what might happen, we still have the other indicators or the other uh, candlestick analysis to tell us what to do. We're a good distance away from the T-line. We're in the overbought area. It's gapped up. At least have a safety stop somewhere. Is Tupperware too far away? Probably. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be buying Tupperware because it's, I mean, it's moved up uh, from the $3 area to the $8 area. I'd find something that looks more like this. And GPRE nuding the uh, 200. Yep. Stay nude. Um, so this one's very simple. What's our doji rule? The price is usually going to move in the direction how they open after a doji. We had that same scenario two days ago in the uh, Dow. Did a doji just below the uh, 200. Told us if they opened it lower, they failed at the 200. There's probably going to be some profit taking. The fact that the news gapped it up through told us there's probably a lot more upside. Uh, yeah, you got lots of uh, lots of money sitting out there, and that's what usually happens. That's why you always watch for the exuberant buying at the top. Because if hedge funds are starting to think, man, we've missed the boat, and they start rushing in, that's where you're going to start getting exuberant buying. So don't be fooled that just because a hedge fund, a mutual fund, an institution is buying or selling, that they know anything more than you do. There's been so many years in the past where the market has been up strong and hedge funds, mutual funds are up 10% for the year. They're just giddy like little schoolgirls uh, that they had a 10% year. And I always thought, wait a minute, you could make 10% a month. Um, using candlestick analysis. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, don't let don't let the institutional thinking sway what the charts are telling you. Okay. I was going to point out something and I can't remember what it is. Look at your wedge break out on with a doji sandwich. So if you're looking at a chart thinking, should I be buying this? A little bit riskier up here, but it might be a wave three. But you go back and say, man, if I'd seen this, the doji sandwich setup right at the breakout level, that would have gotten me in a lot earlier. That's what kind of starts forming your discipline to say, all right, I'm looking for this type of setup. Let's see if I can do this. I'm looking for this type of setup, knowing that if I see a resistance level and a doji sandwich setup, I'm not quite in the overbought area. If it opens positive tomorrow, I want to start buying. That puts you in these breakout situations. So it doesn't take 
but one or two moves like this to make a dismal month turn into a very good month. Oh, there was a, there, uh, what, what is that? Oh, I did have those, okay. Two more. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your J-hook pattern. There's your gap to fill at the 200. High probability trade. There's your fry pan bottom. There's right about where the indecisive trading started. So what happens if this opens positive tomorrow? Doji sandwich breakout. Uh, yeah, PS is a good J-hook pattern. So we're already in this, but it's probably worth a reiteration of a buy. Same thing with BGS. We're already in this. Closed out half the position here and bought it back here. But now it's broken through. It's still got more upside. And what is our upside expectations? Let's get rid of that one. You're probably looking at something along the lines of this. Bringing you up into this area. Would you sell NKLA if it started selling off? Oh, John, the way I rationalized to myself would be if I saw it open up at the 89 level, somewhere up right about in here, and it started selling off, yeah, I'd probably be taking profits. Because if I could buy a stock down here at the $28 area and close it out five days later at the $85, $84 area, that's what I'm in the business for. Is that the top? I don't know. But I've got a big fat part of that uh, trade. I'm going to take it and go home. And then go find something that looks more like this. Uh, yeah, kind of a cradle pattern. Enough to say yes. I'd be a buyer of this one. Because not even if you don't want to consider it a cradle pattern, you do have a left-right combo. You do have a series of dojis. And you have bullish confirmation of your... Uh, confirmation candle, which essentially tells you they've changed their mind or they're, uh, they've told you which way they're going, wouldn't be afraid to be buying that one. Okay, so are there any general questions on candlestick analysis? We had a, was it this weekend? I can't even remember. We had a good weekend session, the uh, mini session on how to identify where the breakouts are about ready to occur based upon the setups of uh, uh, candlestick signals and patterns coming up to a resistance level. That was the mini session. On June uh, 20th, we are going to be doing a full session on reiterating how you identify the uh, setups and then what is the best trading strategy to take advantage of that setup. And that might be a combination of buying the stock, buying the calls, buying a combination of stock and calls, buying uh, credit spreads, buying debit spreads, or a combination of calls and uh, spreads. So what we're going to try to really, I don't know what I want to say, hone or pinpoint is if we see a price move, now you start taking everything into account. Where, where's the market? Are we overbought, oversold? 
uh, flat on the market? And should we be buying aggressively, buying uh, conservatively, or with some protection? So we're going to be going through all that. That's going to be a full day session. So bring your your uh, chair pillows. What did the ancient rice traders use for over? Uh, I don't know if they used anything. They may have just been looking at something like this. Say, well, we're in a big downtrend. I don't. They didn't have stochastics. Um, what are the signs of exuberant buying when? They start gapping up when they start doing big moves. Now, obviously, uh, this one fits into that exuberant buying category. And I don't know whether this was a function of people short covering or what. Oh, Ron, yeah, normal uptrend. Um, I mean, as massive as that selling was, fortunately we were short partway down that. All the selling of prices, that stock prices that moved from there to there, and there were stocks that went from 80 to 6. Now investor sentiment is building back up. Now you're catching some of those big price moves. So that's, yeah. yeah I don't know how to quantify that answer. This is, I just haven't seen moves like this in decades. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. I hate to even say this. I didn't even know what NKLA does. Uh, they merged with Tim. Everybody else knows who they did. Who did uh, v VTIQ merge with? Or buy. So we were... Uh, We were buying right here because of this little wedge breakout. Oh, did VTIQ merge? With, I thought they, uh, nah. Nicola Motors, all right. Oops, there's one that there's a nice fry pan bottom breakout that gapped up. There's a gap to fill up here. So tons of, uh, that's what I thought was kind of a small name. The next TLRA. I don't know, TLRA isn't, TLRY. Ah, okay, thank you, Ray. I thought, what's his name at Tesla said that they had a battery that would go a million miles. One million miles. All right. Okay. Let's see. Ten orders don't require a deposit. Oh, okay. So back to the uh, 
What do you do? If we were buying in here and it's up here, I'm taking off. I, the only reason I didn't take any off here is because it was trading up nicely. And then in the last, oh, I think just from the time we were on in the chat session, it scooted up. That's not what I wanted to do. Now in the last, uh, the 10 minute chart, one, two, three, four, five, last hour or so, it went up another 20 points. HCR, whoops, we're in a, uh, looks like it's a fairly low volume. Yeah, you could be buying this one, just make sure the volumes have to end that price. Stop. Uh, Sting. Yeah, that started coming back, but I think Nordic is probably a much better chart. All right. Jim, did you do the double line? Go ahead and do the double line. Oh, Jim, you didn't put any double line. Okay. Now put another double line. Everybody's got three more seconds to put their final requests in. So it stops the scrolling. All right. Man, we've got a ton of them. All right, you're probably going to hear a lot of just stay long, so don't be insulted that I don't do any more analysis than that. So that would be a toughie. Uh, I'd be ready to take profits. Now, on a big percent move, remember, you uh, can, if it opens lower, you close it out, and then you can always buy it back if it comes back up. But if it opens lower and trades lower, you've got a 90% probability it's not going to come back up until the next buy signal. Chewy, you stay long as long as it trades positive. Uh, Labu, Gale, 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 Gale. Look at this mortgage board here. Labu. Look for it to move higher. Right now, it's telling us that the uh, biotech sector isn't real strong. Vivo, that is a good chart. You can buy this one on positive trading. And United Foods, you can get ready to buy this little J-hook pattern breakout on positive trading. MYOV, J-hook pattern uh, set up. Uh, stay long, or especially uh, buy it if it opens positive. What is this? HDB. Oh, uh, is that traded lower? There is your hanging man, Dragonfly Doji. You get ready to, uh, uh, if this opens lower, they're coming back to test the T-line. Google, you just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. FNV, stay short. EXAS, uh, another one you can buy if it breaks out positive tomorrow. Kind of a little J-hook uh, patterns right here on the uh, 200 and the T-line. Right Aid, if you like this one, you can stay long or you can buy it with the expectation it's going to come up and test this level. Electronic Arts, nothing here. I'd, there's too many better charts out there. 
right now. If you're long, it has to open positive, but I'd probably be trading something else. Pepsi, nothing. I'd be someplace else on this one. There's no direction in a market that is going gangbusters. Salesforce, you can buy this one, but it's not a great chart either. If you're buying it, you need to see it break out through this area. Glop. That's a nice chart. There's kind of your scoop pattern. There's your doji hammer uh, gap up. Your doji sandwich, you can stay long or you can still be buying this one. Jets. Stay long. I would probably use today's low as a stop. It shouldn't come back in that direction. ALXN, a J-hook pattern. You could buy this one. Whoops, that was Alexa answering me. ALXN, Alexa. Uh, Skyworks, stay long. Put your safety stop just below today's low. DX, another J or a fry pan bottom breakout. You stay. You can buy this one on the breakout, or if you're long, you stay long. Iron Mountain, another one where you put your safety stop at today's low. You shouldn't see it come back through that level. Wouldn't be a buyer. I would be long. Another uh, one right at the 200. If it opens lower, I'd take profits. You can always buy it back if it comes back up through uh, the open or uh, up through uh, the 200. Now, I can't even type. Uh, get, uh, you stay with this. Safety stop. You stay long. Safety stop at today's open. EIX Edison, there's your fry pan bottom, little J-hook pattern, at least look for a test of the 200. Ocular, just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Throws, another one of the trucking companies. You could be buying this one, just watch to see what happens once it gets to the 200. CPA, we're staying long. It did a trend kicker signal today. Whoops. Trend kicker type signal, which implies there's more upside in that uh, fry pan bottom breakout. Uh, nothing here yet. They need to break out through this area. Um, you need, some, need further confirmation to start buying that one. S-R-N-E, this one you can get ready to buy. Kind of a little scoop pattern back up above the T line. You could buy that one. And court. Uh, morning star type signal. You can buy this one on positive trading. BXRX. Uh, bruise, 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 bruise. BE, little scoop type pattern. You can buy this one on positive trading, breaking out. Sage. Uh, kind of a little bullish flutter kicker signal. You can be buying it, but watch to see what happens once it gets to that resistance level. Uh, that is where you would have closed out, BCLI, if you had your safety stop right there. So right now, I would suspect this is coming back. That, now that's a bearish engulfing signal. 
That's a cell signal. And then Chesapeake ran up pretty strong, but you say it's trading back down here after hours. If that's the case, then you don't know what it's going to do. Close it out. CPE, if it opens lower, take your profits. INSW, morning star signal. You could buy this one, especially if it breaks out through this level. United, stay long. Use today's low as your stop. Royal Caribbean, stay long. Also use today's low as your stop. SRG, same scenario. Stay long. Put your safety stop at today's open. Some of these, if you start seeing a little bit of indecision and you've got big profits, take them. Because a lot of these stocks are up way up in no man's land. You're better off putting it back in cash and finding ones that are have higher probabilities just starting the uptrend. And NXTX, did I do that right? Say that right. NT and X. Uh, nothing wildly exciting. You're, if you're long, you just stay long. GameStop. Oh, that broke out. Nothing great, but if you like it, you can be buying it. You just watch to see what happens up at this level. Stay long on this one. Should be a fry pan bottom type setup heading for this area, but just have your stop at today's low or at open. We did Tesla. Tesla, you stay long. Zen, you can get ready to buy this one with the expectation that your uptrending channel is going to bring you back up above that level. Probably bring you back up into this area. A lot of the REITs were doing good. You stay long on that slow curve. Same scenario, though. Put your stop at today's low. Labu, we did. Not real great. It's maintaining. Um, I wouldn't be a buyer of it, but if it trades positive, I'd be looking at some of the other biotechs to see which ones have the uh, strongest charts. ACB, a good breakout. You could be buying this one after a series of dojis on positive trading tomorrow. Uh, Zoom was trying to do a J-hook pattern. You can buy this one on positive trading with the anticipation they could bring it back up into this area. SWX, nothing. Would not be long or short, that one. ADMS, that one's got your bullish flutter kicker signal. Bearish candle, gap up doji, positive open. You can be buying this one with the anticipation if it breaks out through here, which it looks like it's got enough strength to do, you're going much higher. We did uh, throw. You could be buying this one. Just watch to see what happens when it gets to the 200. Whoops. Oh, uh, boy. How did I... Let's see. We did those. Electronic Arts, Pepsi, Google. Didn't we do those this afternoon? This one, you stay short. CPE, if it opens lower, you take profits. TJ Maxx, you can stay long on this bobble breakout. Hit, hit there, supported there. Did an inverted hammer gap up. You can still be buying this one. Yes. 
uh, that Tesla may have had more of an insightful brain than Edison. Edison was a lot of uh, experimenting. Tesla usually thought about his uh, inventions in his head until they were complete. Then he built the, uh, the model for it. Then you get ready to buy if this opens positive tomorrow. Twillow. Nothing yet. If it opens positive, you have the potential of a bullish flutter kicker with a belt hold type signal, which means you stay long. And LVGO didn't get started yet. Still wouldn't buy this one until probably it breaks out of this congestion area above the $65 range. And Facebook, another one that if you're long, you can stay long, but I wouldn't be buying this one. There's not enough energy in it right now. NGL backed off today, but I'd still be a buyer of this one, especially if it came back up through today's open. Sid looks like it's heading for the uh, at least the 200. Pay sign, another one you can buy if it opens positive doing a doji sandwich with the first target being the 200. RNWK, you can start buying this one. Not a great chart, but at least a J-hook pattern. Not a real strong buy signal down here. And Riot, all you can do with this one is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Schlumberger, just stay long. Use today's open as your stop. Match, uh, nothing. If it does open positive tomorrow, you've got a J-hook pattern coming off an inverted hammer. You can be buying it. But I wouldn't be buying it until I saw some good bullish confirmation. And space, eh, if you like it, you can buy it, but it's there's not any great trend to this one right now. Which means that Hemi Nahal would be saying I'd be trading something else. Nice breakout on Hexo. Make sure your volume is hefty. You can stay long on this one. You could probably still be buying this one with Maybe the expectation of heading to the uh, 200. Just stay long on this one. This is Bosch and Loam. Jets, stay long. Use today's open as your stop. ALXN, you can buy on positive trading. SWKS, Skyworks, use today's low as your stop. Target, nothing yet. But you can buy on positive trading, anticipating your J-hook pattern, keeping your uptrend in progress. We did, I think we did United Foods. Uh, You can buy this one if it breaks out. You can see kind of the wedge. I think we did Royal Caribbean, right? We did United. Royal Caribbean, stay long. Use today's low as your stop. PBF, we're still long on this one. Notice your double doji, best friend gap up through the resistance level should be more upside. And CTRE, you just stay long. Kind of a little trend kicker, uh, J-hook pattern breakout. Uh, J-hook pattern, fry pan bottom breakout. Expect that to be your target. Jim was asleep, yep.
Zillow, nothing wildly exciting, just stay long. What does Zillow stock look like? Pretty much the same thing. Zenga, you can start buying this one if it trades positive. Oh, I skipped a bunch. Pen. Uh, this one, if you're long, has to open positive. If it opens lower, close it out. And Peloton. Nothing. I'd be out of this. It wouldn't be long or short. Jazz, uh, this one definitely I would have closed out if I'd been long. Now you've got more reason to kind of look at this, maybe go short if you want to have a couple of short positions in the portfolio. OPNT, another one that you might, uh, uh, nah, I guess if you were long, if it doesn't do something strong tomorrow, close it out, move your money on to something that's got better prospects. Hey, Abbott, uh, eh, eh, eh. if you like it, you can stay long. It just wouldn't be anything I'd want to buy right now because it's got the downtrending channel and no real uh, bullish signal. Vive, that one's got at least a morning star signal. You can stay long on this as long as it stays above the T-line. Johnson & Johnson, nothing. Probably wouldn't be long or short. No direction on this one. Okay, it came out at 301, which means people were expecting it. And when it came out, that's what pumped it up during that last hour. IMU, this one you can get ready to buy on positive trading. You had the dumpling top, which has now failed in the oversold area. You can get ready to start buying this one. And Nuance, another one you can buy on positive trading, just maintaining the uptrend. Court, and we did that one. You can buy on positive trading. Nothing on this one. Up, oh, crow. All right. Crone, look for a 45 degree off of here. Oh, uh, nah, nothing strong there yet. I mean, you got the makeup of a morning star signal, but you're still trading below the T line. Probably wouldn't be long or short this one. That's right. Cat, stay long, have your safety stop just below today's open. This one you can buy, you got kind of a wedge formation. You can buy this one on positive trading. That's a good, good looking chart. An American, the profit taking of yesterday after it hit the 200 is over. If you're long, you stay long. I don't know whether I'd buy this one. There's too many other good uh, airlines to, to go after. All right, well, again, if Chesapeake is filing for a bankruptcy, it's probably chapter 11, so they're just, uh, kind of keeping the uh, creditors off their back until they're, they can get uh, uh, their equity back in the, uh, in the reserves based upon the crude oil prices. ACAD, I would have closed out a short position, but I wouldn't be going long until they can get up through the T-line. Notice your short position or your support was right in here on this morning star type signal.
uh, again, they're, they've got the assets in the ground. I mean, they've all got good, strong reserves. But the value of those reserves have been cut in half over the last couple of months. So your creditors that are lending you money based upon the value of your reserves are coming back and saying, you got to do something. Well, they can't do anything. So they go into Chapter 11 so they can have a judge say, all right, your, uh, your uh, debt structure, structure will be done like this, and at least that protects them for a little bit. There is a big, uh, again, when you see these type of breakouts, this is why the J-hook pattern is very effective. Because you can see there was a major change of investor sentiment on this one. What one did we just do? Marvell. This one probably would have closed out today with it coming back down through this level. Again, this one is backing off when the market was up big. Something's wrong in River City. Nothing real confusing on this one. If you're long, you stay long. They took it up big. They did profit taking. Now the profit taking is over. I would expect more upside. Now you watch to see if they can bring it back up to the the 200-day moving average. And to protect your position, you'd put your safety stop just below today's low. EXPE, there's your J-hook pattern, wave one. Wave three should take you to the 200-day moving average. Uh, uh, if you don't have a sell signal, Leo, let's see. If you don't have a sell signal, sold off, they popped it back up, but if they brought it back down through this level, would that tell you the selling is still continuing? If you were buying something, I'm trying to think of which one it would be. Uh, let's say you were buying Boeing on this day. The next day it gaps up, but if it closed back below the halfway point of this candle, that would tell you the breakout didn't occur. So you could watch it, and if it finally closed right here, you might close it out. But if it traded during the day down through the low of that day, or opens up here and trades down through the, the open of this day, you know, the halfway point is less relevant up here because of the magnitude of the move. In this strong market, do you roll calls to higher strikes to lock in profits along the way or just stay in the original bought calls until the sell? No. Um, if you've got big profits in some calls, I would take the profits. Now you've got stocks that might be in overbought conditions but there's no sell signal yet. So let's say you bought the calls right in here and they're up huge. Might close them out and then say, now I'm going to buy a 13, 15 spread. So if it goes up in the high risk area, you're still making a good percent return, but you've got a lot less money exposed to the trade. Oh, uh, Edwards, nothing to get real excited about. I mean, if you like it, you can be buying it. You do have a, uh, not quite a bullish, yeah, it's not a real signal, it's just a bounce. It, it wouldn't be something that I'd go after with any great enthusiasm, especially with as many good charts there are out there. On APFA, I would just stay long, expecting a 45 degree. And 
and Capri trend kicker signal, fry pan bottom, J hook pattern, I would suspect you're heading, still heading with enough strength up to the 200 day moving average. Another one that's gapping up, look for the 200 day moving average. That was on KMI. Okay, everybody, we're still in a good market. I didn't see what the pre or aftermarket futures were, but they were still a little bit positive. So right now, if you're taking profits on big moves, maybe close out half the position and let the other half ride. So with that, everybody have a good evening. We will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. We'll see you then.